So here I have a list called sec list, and there's various lists of payloads, passwords, fuzzings, usernames, pattern matchings, miscellaneous discovery, all types of lists for various types of exploits, vulnerabilities, and recon. Okay, so coming into the sec list, I'm going to CD into fuzzing, and then there we see there is a folder specifically for cross-site scripting right here. So I'll CD into the cross-site scripting, and there's a readme. Let me go ahead and cat that open. And we see that the ones that are good for automated tools like Zap or Burp Suite is the robot-friendly version. So CDing into the robot-friendly folder, we see we have various lists. Let me just go ahead and do a head on all of them and take a look at that. Pretty neat looking, to be honest with you. If you have never seen one of these types of lists, just take a moment to appreciate the activity. It's pretty cool, man. Like these are some crazy looking payloads. This is not something that you would remember to type, right? Like how, how are you gonna remember this, dude? Like how are you gonna remember to type that, right? You have all these different payloads with all these different weird syntaxes and symbols and different types of encodings. It's one of those things where you realize how little you actually know and thank God for these existing resources. Okay, so here we see on the XSS brutelogic.txt, we have various types of payloads. The first one's using an event handler with the SVG tag. So let me go ahead and load that one in. I'll click load and I will come over to the same folder and select the cross-site scripting brute logic. We now have all these payloads set inside. Let's go ahead and repeat our attack. You can see that there's gonna be a total of 115 requests being sent. Here you can see the payload that's being sent along and we see the different status codes. We're gonna be looking for any types of anomalies and hopefully find the field that allows for cross-site scripting. 